So let's go ahead and take a look at some examples. What I'm going to do is start with a CoLab notebook, which if you are using CoLab notebooks, you can copy into your Google Drive. And the CoLab notebook looks like this. So um, <clears throat> here is the first cell. This uh, top cell is a text cell. Um, so there's no way to run that cell as it is. So I'm going to click on the second cell and I see that I have the run button over here. So what this cell does is take this string literal and assigns it to a variable called character name. So let's go ahead and click the button and see what happens. It takes a minute for this to start up because it's initializing, but it has now printed on the screen what the value is of the variable. In Jupyter Notebooks and also in the Python shell, if you simply put the name of a variable, it will display what the value of that variable is. If you're running a script, this uh, behavior does not happen. If you're running a script, you actually have to tell the script to print the value of the variable. Um, so we can do this for assigning a number and also assigning a Boolean. Now I'm going to pause for just a moment. Um, <clears throat> the first thing that I want to do is show you how you can clear the output of the cells. If you want to do something over or if you find it confusing, you can just go to clear all outputs and it's basically the way it looked when it started. Now I'm going to switch over to a Jupyter Notebook, which is what you would see if you were running a local Jupyter Notebook server on your own computer, or if you were using a cloud service like Azure, uh, it would look basically exactly like this. So here we see, again, the, um, the uh, cell here that has text in it, the markdown cell, and then here are three of the code cells. So if I click on the cell now, there's no play button over here, but rather I go up to the top and say run. It tells me the output is Wilma. I say run on this one. So as you can see, it run, when you run a cell, it just goes down to the next cell so that it's ready to be run. Um, in a generic Jupyter notebook, if you want to clear the contents of the cell, you go to the cell menu, go down to all output, and then select clear. So um, there's a couple things about uh, how we uh, write our code. So in general, it doesn't really matter about spacing that we put in between the operators and the variables. Um, however, it's conventional to leave a single space. So in these three examples here, we see that um, in this case, I put a single space between the equal sign and the other objects. And here I didn't put any spaces, and here I put more than one space. But if I run these three cells, you'll see that the output is exactly the same. It doesn't really matter um, how I do that. Now, although the spacing within the cells is not important, is not particularly important. The indentation at the front of, uh, at the left side of the line is very critical. And we aren't going to talk about that now, but this will come up again later. I mentioned that either double or single quotes can be used to define screen, uh, strings that string literals. Um, and as I said, single quotes are conventional. So although you can sometimes get away with doing different kinds of things, if you are going to share your code with other people, it's really a good idea to follow those conventions. Um, so this code follows the conventions and these two code cells do, uh, does not. Blank lines are really your choice. So for example, if I want to, if I think it makes my code cleaner and easier to read, or if I want to separate out blocks of code, I can leave spaces one or more spaces, and that's totally fine and conventional. Um, there are actually style guidelines for Python, and those are given in what's known as the PEP8 style guide. I will generally try to follow the PEP8 style guide um, in the code that I write. So 
um, you may not want to bother to go look at the style guide and you'll probably just pick some of it up from seeing how I write the code. So uh, I also want to just take a moment to talk about the naming of objects. So when we write a variable that is the name for an object um, that we've stored, we like for those to be um, descriptive because especially if you write a lot of code, it's very easy to forget what is in a particular um, variable. And so uh, a lot of times we will write variable names that are composed of several words that describe what that variable contains. And uh, so there is a kind of uh, convention for this, it's called snake case, where you take each of the descriptive words and you put an underscore in between them. And that uh, is the uh, preferred method for multi-word variable names in PEP8. You will also sometimes see what's known as camel case. This is where you close up the words right next to each other, start the first word with lowercase, and then each subsequent word after that has a capital letter. Um, that's called lower camel case, and those are typically used for variables and functions. You will also see when people are defining classes, sometimes they use what's called upper camel case, in which the first uh, letter begins with a capital letter. Um, but we will be using snake case uh, and generally using all lowercase letters in the variable names because that's what PEP8 recommends. Um, I'll just wrap up this section by one of my pet peeves, which is basically don't ever put spaces in any kind of name. A lot of people like to put spaces in file names. Uh, I hate that because it always comes back later to bite you. Um, most of the time you can get away with it, but sometimes you can't, especially when you're in the situation of coding. So it's much better for file names to separate words either with underscores or dashes or to just put them close up to each other with uh, camel case. Um, in Python, actually dashes can sometimes cause problems, so I just generally separate words with underscore whenever I'm working with Python.